Welcome to a special edition of Crawford County Outdoors. I'm Dwayne Kohler, and you can probably guess by the sign over my shoulder that we're not in Crawford County today. We are in northern Canada in Moffat, Quebec. Um, Mike Moss from the Woods to Wall Taxidermist uh, suggested a, a trip to Canada on a bear hunt. So we're really looking forward to that today. I think you're going to enjoy the show, so stay with us. Well, Mike, I had my first bear hunt, and it was quite an experience. And uh, um, I, I know it got, yeah, got the heart racing a little bit there, but, but how'd I do? You did awesome. You did everything you were supposed to do. And I actually got to give you big props. I mean, we had a cameraman there for you who got sick. You stepped up to bat, and you filmed your own hunt. Uh, very difficult to do with another guy in the stand with you, but uh, to do it on your own, I give you props. You've done a great job. When when the bear when the bear started to come, I had the camera set up and and I reached over and hit the hit the record button and and uh, the bear the bear showed up um, um, right where you said it was going to, mm -hmm. and uh, circled around the bait a little bit and was real cautious right. and I, I was interested. It never seemed to look towards me. And it, nope. now now how did we get to that point? I, I'm thinking the bear's coming in. He's all he's going to be looking for is, right. is me, right? right. But, well, it, it, you have to understand. You know, we have multiple bait sites that we establish. Um, the key is that we have no contact to that stand. We're going to come in, we're going to bait the site. It was the first time a hunter had sat in that stand. So there's never been any scent there or any reason for that bear to be alarmed over in that direction. Uh, you slipped in there, we slipped the cameraman in there. Um, the bear had no idea. Now he had been coming and feeding there for two weeks prior to you getting here. Never was there a hunter in that stand to, to, to ever alarm him, so he's not going to look there unless you give him a reason. So Now he kind of circled around the, the bait site several times and was, you know, kind of curious a little bit and, and went and uh, I was really impressed he, that uh, there was a metal cover on, on top of the bait and, and he, right. he pushed some of, the, some of the rocks and logs away. Right. But then rather than keep pushing them all away and, and pushing the metal cover off, he just bent that cover up like yeah. a potato chip. Yeah. And I, he knows I like what he wants and he's going to use whatever means it is to get to it. <laughs> As you've seen, uh, they, they live by their stomach and uh, he knows what's in there and he's going to get it. Nothing's going to stop him. How do, how do you judge, by the way, if it's a big bear, a small bear, whatever? I'm like, I, and I'm, I'm going through my mind. Is that is that a big bear? Is that a small bear? And then I watch them bend that that metal that metal cover of a freezer. Yeah, and that convinces you it's big enough. Wow, that's a, that's a pretty <laughs> strong bear. He, he can do that. If he can bend metal, he's he's big enough. No, uh, uh, it, the average bear uh, in here, uh, United States, where we are, uh, from here, Canada, Maine. Uh, 100 pounds, 150 pounds, 200 pounds. Those are your average bears. Uh, don't 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 be fooled by you know the advertisements and the shows. There are enormous bears out here. Uh, there's enormous bears in Pennsylvania, as we know. Uh, I think Pennsylvania has some of the largest bears in the world. Uh, some some great bears taken every year in Pennsylvania. Same as here. Um, judging a bear is is the most difficult animal. In Canada and North America, it, it, it is the most difficult animal to judge in size in the field. Uh, there's no antlers to judge them by, so you can't, you know, can't Boone and Crockett or Pope and Young score them while they're standing on the hoof. Uh, but there are some, some some key things you can look for. Uh, it, it's important to, to to not get excited, not rush the shot, and judge your bear a little bit. We put indicators out there, and we tell our hunters who are first timers most of the time. Uh, little things they can do to 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 tell the size. Uh, you saw over the, the the times the time that you've been here that a lot of our sites we just use a five gallon buckets. Now you watch a lot of people in other shows they just dump on the ground, hide under logs, you know the bait, or or use a, a 55 gallon drum, which is another good indicator of bear size, and that's why they do it. But uh, we use a five gallon bucket. We found that over the years that will feed multiple bears. You know, overnight we bait every day. We don't go bait and then go back two weeks later, and, and we don't do that. We bait every day because we want to know how many animals are coming into the area. But a five-gallon bucket, a good indication, and that's what we tell our clients, if that bear can't get his head down in that five-gallon bucket, don't come back and tell us I didn't shoot because I didn't know. That's a big bear if he can't get his head in a five-gallon bucket. If he can't get his head in there, he's a shooter. Um, now, something you told me was now don't don't pass up on a bear that you take on the last day just because it's your first or second try. Give exactly. it a try. Exactly. If it's something that if the bear comes in you've never hunted and it, 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 it's 
it's not a it doesn't matter to you you want an ice bear uh, there's a couple things we like you to do but yeah don't pass a bear up you know because you don't know the size or you might think it's too small if you would be happy with it and you would take it on the last day take it because you might not have an opportunity we are in the wild there's no guarantees you may never see another bear we have a couple hunters that week th this week here uh, we got two hunters left and we'll be 100 percent again this year on on shot opportunity uh, but those two hunters it, we're coming up on week's end and they're probably thinking should have taken that smaller bear you know it's but uh no if it's something you're happy with take it now because tomorrow might not be there uh but to judge the bear again to get back to that uh we give you a couple indicators with the bucket and stuff like that if it comes in and it has to reach for the bucket obviously it's not it's not a big bear it's a five gallon bucket it stands 18 inches high so uh, if he doesn't come in and put his head on the bucket, if he's twice the size of the bucket, that's a good indicator. He's, you know, a little better than average bear. Uh, that's a good indicator. As far as the animal itself, if his belly's close to the ground and he waddles in, he's a big bear. Whether it be a sow and, and have some age to her in size, or whether it be a big boar, that's a big bear. If the belly in the, is close to the ground and he's waddling, it's a big bear. Look for the big bear crease. Uh, male bears have a, a mus muscle structure on their heads that w when they reach maturity there will be a, a, a perfect V down the center of their head. Their ears will look small and, and, and out of proportion to their head. It will look like they just have nubs. That's a huge bear. You can't be fooled by that. That's a huge bear. Uh, you can't use the muzzle. Some people say, oh, if it's got a short muzzle, it's probably a broad, big muzzle, and that's why it's short, the head's big. But that's not a good indicator because females typically have a shorter muzzle. Uh, females. We uh, don't want any of our females shot. They're hard to judge and females get taken, but they're the next generation. Um, we want to take male bears to control the population. Uh, we don't want to rush the shot. We tell all our hunters, we have a little briefing with our hunters and stuff prior to their hunt, uh, wait until the animal comes in because oftentimes the sow will come in first and she's got cubs. If you wait and give that sow a little bit of time, those cubs will come in. It's not always, I've, I've heard outfitters tell uh, people at shows and stuff, uh, the cubs will run right in first and you'll know, well, it's a sow then. That's not the case. Uh, unfortunately, we have had sows taken, and, and you know you can't lie about that. It's uh, if a sow's taken and she's got cubs, nobody wants that. The hunter doesn't want it. We don't want it. But uh, just wait. I mean, if you have to pass up a sow that's got cubs and you don't get a bear, you've done a good thing. You know, uh, you don't need to do that. So, so the, the the bear that did come in for me, I watched it for several minutes. I think it, uh, I have to look back at the video, but I think it was seven or eight minutes, and yep. and finally presented me a good shot. Right. Um, and I remember what you told me. Now, aim behind the behind the shoulder and mid body, and I think I got him right there. And you, I, I think your video is going to show <laughs> you couldn't have got a more perfect shot. Boom! Went right that down. Yep. And took off and running. I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> that bear took off running. They are very. You know, you can put them right down, or they can go. And and, and the bear you shot is indicative of the, the bear that you're going to get. That is, it's a good specimen. It's the average bear. Um, the coat was fine. I, I mean, it was a beautiful bear, uh, but that's the average size. I mean, it was not a small bear by any means, and it was not an enormous bear, but that's what the, the customer's going to get typically is is that size bear. But uh, your shot, you couldn't have... You couldn't have made it any better. So he ran out of the frame and he started to run uh, up a little bit of a hill. And I'm hurried I'm getting another shell on rather than swing the camera right away. Right. Um, and he got part way up the hill and just kind of tumbled back down. And then he started a, like a moaning and groaning kind of a thing. Well, uh, what's up with that? It's what's referred to as the death moan. It's a, that bear's last breath. Uh, they do that when they're, when they're lung shot. It, it, it's not to be uh, graphic or grotesque, but uh, if a hunter hears that death moan, because the animal has disappeared in the brush or whatever. If he hears that death moan, it's, it's, it's a good feeling. The animal has expired very quickly, and you know that, although that's the last breath of that animal, you know that that animal is, is done where it's at, and that it was quick. And your, your, uh, your bear died very quick, had no idea what happened to it, and uh, it, again, it expired quickly because of a well-placed shot. Well, I appreciate the coaching, and it worked out well, and so thanks. Oh, thanks. Congratulations. I'm glad you got them. <laughs>
Joining us now is Bobby Turbin. Bobby, you're from Wattsburg area? Uh, yeah. How'd you get How'd you get here in Canada to get uh, get a bear hunt going? Um, actually, my friends Ed and his brother Mike, who's the guide, um, they asked me to come up with them. So, what was it like your first time here? It was great. Uh, I came up, sat in the stand for a couple of days. Kind of got a little nervous because I wasn't seeing anything, but then I seen that bear walking in, and I'm like, Whew, this is awesome. Now, was it kind of like that white tail fever that you hear about, you know, to get your heart going pretty good there? Yeah, I mean, I've got the buck fever a couple times, but never like with the bear. With the bear, I'm real shaky. I mean, it was it was really awesome. Now, I was your cameraman. I was right there with you, and uh, we were close. That bear was only, what, yeah. 15, 15, something like that yards away? Yeah, it and was, It was really close, probably about, yeah, like you said, 10, 15 yards. It was awesome. Well, now, what equipment do you use? Now, that was I thought that was pretty interesting, going, going for bear with uh, uh, with archery here. Yeah, I use a Hoyt Katera, and I use, um, these are the Lost Camo, um, what are they even called? Hunter Pro Carbon Arrows that I got from Dave's Archery with my Hoyt Katera. So, the, the carbon fiber, that means they're strong and they're light, right? These are the strongest arrows I have ever shot. I mean, I have literally had a 150-pound deer fall over on this arrow, and when I found it, it was propped over on it, okay. and it didn't break. Every other arrow I'd ever shot had snapped when the deer fell on it. Now, let me ask you to show the broadhead that's on that arrow, because I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I actually used two different kinds. The kind that I killed the bear with is actually my favorite. This is the one I actually killed the bear with. This comes out, and it's called a Rage. It comes out, it has a two inch cutting diameter. I should probably show the other one because that one has the broken tip on it. And that broke off in the bear, is that what happened there? Yeah. See, they look like this, but when they spread out, when that, when this part they hits, hit this, hits the soft tissue, and they spread out, and these, these wings come out. Yeah. And they, so even though that's pretty small, it's gonna make a pretty big wound in the bear, right? Yeah, when they, uh, they hit, they spread out, they open up like, if I can get that one there. There we go. They spread out and open all the way up to two inch cutting diameter. You can get a good view of that. Yeah, they're they're really nice. So you're making it, you're making a hole in that bear that wide. Yeah. That's gonna create a lot of bleeding and. Oh yeah, it opened up that bear great. When I got up to it, cause it didn't start bleeding for probably, what, 20 yards? And when it did, I mean, there was a nice blood trail, and then when we found it, there was a lot of blood. I mean, it did some major damage. Now talk talk about how you how you aimed your shot. Well, the shot that I really would have liked to shot, um, Mike did a great job setting it up. He knew exactly where that bear was going to walk. He set it up with, uh, I think it was called Java Juice, and he waited for the bear, or he made the bear come in and go around the bucket and come back. Well, when it come up, it was propped up like this, just looking. And that's what I really wanted to shoot. But I waited because I knew that if I would have shot right when I wanted to, it was going to step and I was going to miss the shot. So I waited until it walked back around, and it was at an angle, and I had a pretty good shot. And I got it right behind the shoulder, and it was long shot. It was a great shot. And the, the arrow, I, I think I think the folks will see whenever the bear was hit, it fell right away. And it, when it came back up, you could see the oh, arrow yeah. sticking out. And it's like that arrow's only in, you know, it was in what, maybe? Maybe, maybe a foot. A foot or so yeah. in. But it was all the way in through its lungs. Yeah, I, it was a great shot. It knocked the bear right on its butt. I mean, it rolled over probably once or twice, and then it got up. And, I mean, it wasn't sprinting away. It was It was definitely hurting. It wasn't even using its other leg at all. So when you compare this bear hunt to maybe some deer hunts and things you've had in the past, what's it, what's this going to go like? In, in Where's it going to line up in your favorite memories? In my favorite memories, it's probably going to be my second, my second favorite to my first deer hunt. That, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be my second. Well, you'll have some video of it, so that'll be a good thing. Yeah, that, that video is awesome. That video is awesome. I've never had a video of a kill shot. And that one, when I saw it, I was like, oh, man, that's so cool. <laughs> well, congratulations. You did a great job with that. Thanks. It was great to meet you. Nice meeting you, too.